Thank you for the presentation. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, well, obviously, I'm going to present my dependency parcel from uh, for uh, Bulgaria. And uh, let's start with a few words about uh, what, what we're going to see in this uh, slides here. Uh, I will uh, show you the well, part of the implementation and uh, mostly the, the evaluation of uh, the model, the, the neural network of uh, this dependency parser from uh, for Bulgaria. It's uh, built with uh, TensorFlow and uh, the Keras API. And uh, well, logically it uses the, the Bulgarian universal dependencies uh, uh, data set. And uh, actually, this is uh, a kind of partial work. I mean, uh, the parser is working uh, well, but uh, it is uh, not. It not includes uh, part of speech or uh, lemma recognition and so on. Uh, here, the focus the focus is entirely on uh, the dependency analysis itself. Uh, so for prediction, I use another libraries. I will show you uh, later in uh, the next slides what's going on with them. Uh, so all the all the scores and all the results uh, results are based only the labeled and unlabeled scores here. This is what is uh, the goal. And um, well, a little bit of uh, background here. Uh, first of all, the, the grammar concept, of course, for dependency parsing, everyone here knows uh, we are using dependency grammars uh, as uh, the other main uh, approach in linguistics in the last decades. Uh, generative grammar is uh, mostly used uh, in uh, theoretical uh, linguistic studies, but uh, dependency grammar is more appropriate for uh, uh, practical tasks and especially in the field of uh, computational linguistics and of course uh, uh, universal dependencies uh, data sets and their uh, and the parsers built based on this uh, data sets uh, we heard uh, before a while uh, very interesting le uh, lecture on this so i will skip this part for universal dependencies and uh, we'll say a few words about uh, the uh, the main approaches for these parsers that uh, uh, are used in nlp transition based or the so-called shift reduce parsers uh, and uh, the graph based uh, models uh, the transition based uh, parsers actually uh, are faster because uh, they are using uh, kind of uh, movement from uh, stack to a buffer and uh, they are working with partially built tree doing some operations on it um, and uh, graph-based uh, models uh, took all the possible uh, trees, syntax trees, and choose the one with high score, which means it, uh, at least in theory, should give uh, better results. But this came with a cost with, uh, of course, uh, bigger time complexity. So they are slower, but more accurate and uh, what i'm going to to present you here are the results of uh, such a graph based uh, parser and it is uh, it follows the the model proposed by uh, dozent and manning which is called uh, the bfi attention model and uh, this algorithm looks like this uh, this is actually the the picture from the original work and uh, first we have uh, some uh, BLSTM um, levels in the architecture, which, which uh, are fitted with uh, the sentence inputs, the, the embeddings, and uh, they extract uh, the useful uh, syntax and uh, semantic features and give them to the uh, MLP levels, which uh, transform uh, this uh, features in a 
for maths, which is suitable for this last level, which they call be a fine attention uh, levels, which actually are doing the, the predictions of the arcs and uh, the relations. So uh, this model is used as a uh, starting point from, from this parser I will show you. Um, about uh, the data, I already told you that, uh, of course, I'm using the Bulgarian universal dependency uh, data set, which is uh, composed uh, by about uh, 11,000 sentences, which are split uh, in the convenient way for machine learning tasks. Uh, it means uh, about 80% for training data and 10% uh, for development and for uh, test data sets. So uh, no additional uh, split is done here. I just use them out of the box as uh, they are provided in this case by uh, TensorFlow data sets. Uh, for inputs in, uh, in the... Uh, algorithm that you saw before by Dozent and Manning, they're actually using uh, as inputs only this uh, two, only the tokens and the universal part, part of speech tax. But uh, in my model, I decided to, to, to add two additional inputs. Uh, these are the lemmas and uh, the mor morphological language specific uh, characteristics of, of the words. Uh, we will see uh, on the next slides uh, what is the difference as a result, but uh, it it gave some boost to the to the model. Uh, the next step, of course, is uh, to build vocabularies, uh, which in this case are just uh, TensorFlow hash tables, and uh, finally uh, vectorize the data to fit it to the model as model inputs and uh, go to embedding layers. Uh, the model architecture looks like this. Uh, well, I know it's uh, too small and <laughs> we can't see much of it. That's why I put some labels on a site. Uh, well, first are these input levels, the, the embeddings, uh, but, uh, but here they are uh, we have four of them instead of three, then we concatenate them uh, before that, that they uh, they go through very strong regularization. I will talk about this uh, later. Uh, next come this uh, BLSTM levels uh, that we saw in the, the previous uh, slides and the, the MLP layers. Uh, but uh, it is important that, that we have a very, very strong dropout between, between every level, literally. Uh, and finally, we have the, uh, the BFI attention levels. Uh, also, the, the model is uh, using uh, the, the Adam optimizer and is provided with uh, custom loss functions and uh, uh, well, uh, let's let's move to the to the next site about uh, the experiments and results. As here is the most interesting part. Uh, as I said, the, the original dropout uh, that is proposed by Dozent and Manning uh, in their work is uh, zero point thirty three. But uh, for languages like Bulgarian, I mean. Uh, very uh, morphologically rich languages, stronger regularization occurred uh, to, to work much better. And uh, the difference is uh, more than like half percent with the same hyperparameters. Uh, hyper uh, it's actually uh, 0.66 percent increase of the model, model performance with uh, drop out uh, 0 0.5 and uh, for both uh, unlabeled and uh, labeled attachment scores. Um, this, uh, well, from, from one side, it's uh, 
at least in my opinion, uh, connected with uh, this, that Bulgarian is highly inflected language. But from the other side, uh, the authors here, uh, I mean, those at and Manning, uh, they have tested on uh, much bigger data sets uh, like English, Czech, uh, Chinese, and so on. And uh, Bulgarian uh, being so small, strong uh, regularization helps to prevent overfitting. So uh, this is another possible reason for, for this improvement of the model that way. Uh, of, uh, next, uh, the learning race and uh, decay rates. Uh, I have experimented with, uh, instead of using uh, the integrated atom uh, decay, to, to use exponential decay between these uh, two values that you see on the screen. But uh, unfortunately, this uh, didn't give me the, uh, the results that could improve uh, the model. Actually, the best one achieved uh, between these uh, values were slightly worse that, than the, the best values uh, the model achieved without using, using exponential decay. Uh, really slightly below, but still below. So maybe uh, a little more fine, fine tuning here could give better results, but uh, I don't think it's uh, gonna be uh, very beneficial if, they give better result, it will be slightly better. So uh, the corrections of uh, the batch size, uh, the best uh, score I achieved uh, was with a batch size of uh, 128 and uh, with 80 epochs. Uh, I tried to uh, to play a little bit with, uh, with these values and uh, well, usually, uh, bigger batch size, at least in theory, should give better results. But in this case, it occurs it's the, uh, the opposite. Uh, with uh, bigger batch sizes, I received uh, lower results. And as you can see, it's, uh, it's not so small drop down here, more than half percent for both uh, labeled and unlabeled score. And uh, the reason here should be again the uh, the size of the data set, which is only about ten thousand uh, sentences, and uh, this way with uh, the big uh, batch size, it it can generalize well because uh, from one side uh, it maybe overfits uh, the data and uh, it can't uh, go through uh, entire nuances of. Uh, of the data set and uh, the smaller, uh, the other option when I uh, actually decrease the batch size and increase uh, the epochs, the results were very similar with the best one achieved with uh, the optimal uh, one. So uh, with in this case, with smaller uh, batch size, the Bulgarian data set uh, data set works best uh, at least with with this. Uh, algorithm. Um, another uh, another uh, option that that I have uh, changed several times was uh, the, the input levels. And as I show you on the previous uh, screen with uh, the model architecture, adding uh, lemmas and uh, the language specific uh, morphological information as input uh, uh, layers actually re, uh, give the gave the most boost to the model, and uh, here uh, we have uh, zero point eighty six percent for unlabeled score, and uh, one point thirty one percent raise for uh, labeled score, which uh, I think the reason here should uh, should be the again. Uh, the Bulgarian being uh, really highly inflected language and uh, this uh, language specific morphological information gives the needed information to the uh, algorithm to, to predict uh, better. And uh, finally, uh, well, uh, 
at least to to hear it uh, this model has nothing to do with uh, the large language models but <laughs> sooner or later i should think about it so uh, i just uh, try to to replace uh, the uh, only for the the tokens when i vectorize the data to uh, to replace the standard tensorflow uh, embeddings with uh, roberta embeddings and uh, actually this uh, this gave me a little uh, higher results we can see them here well uh, it's uh, zero uh, 0.21 percent for unlabeled and uh, half percent for labeled score uh, so uh, here we can see actually the the power of large language models but uh, uh, this is a little bit uh, uh, fake because uh, actually I used this Roberta embeddings only in the pre-processing the data, not in the model itself. And so I believe if I I put uh, this Roberta embeddings in the model, it it will uh, have a, a greater impact. And uh, the next slide uh, shows the uh, the results of. Uh, of this model compared to, to some of the most popular uh, parser that's, uh, that has connected Pepper, which reported the result for, for, uh, for Bulgarian. Yes. Uh, well, SPACY, uh, NLP Cube, uh, UDPI, UDFI, uh, and this one here, the second, uh, this is uh, the, the implementation of uh, the same be a fine uh, attention algorithm just like it is uh, described by, by uh, the authors doesn't and manning and uh, this one here is with the the improvements with the additional uh, layers and uh, change dropout and so on uh, so as you can see it's uh, slightly better than uh, some of uh, the the previous parsers but of course it's uh, still not as good as uh, parsers like uh, Unify and uh, some others uh, the reason for this is that uh, from one side Unify is trained uh, using uh, large language models and uh, it it uses BART. It's much uh, which makes it uh, much bigger. Uh, well, my model with uh, Roberta embeddings is about thirty million, and uh, here we talk about uh, billion parameters uh, down there. And uh, the other thing is that Unify is trained uh, on all the universal dependency sets combined together concatenated and and trained on them so uh, this this gives additional advantage so here uh, I will try to find some uh, improvements um, okay uh, about uh, the prediction and visualization as I said uh, this parser for now doesn't predict part of speech so I had to use uh, some other library to uh, process raw text. So here I'm using uh, Classler for the moment. And now I'm working on uh, the part of speech parser, but it will take some time. Uh, then uh, the, the text is converted to the well-known CoNLL format. Uh, from there, it is converted to Displace tree bank, and uh, it has a model that can visualize uh, the data. So the final result could look like this, for example, and uh, a few words about the the future work. Of course, uh, I have tried many uh, hyperparameters, but uh, their tuning is never enough. So, I believe here I can get some additional uh, boost for the results. Uh, of course, better embeddings and uh, especially the ones, well, uh, most of the, the models of this co-NLL NLL task uh, use uh, BERT as uh, uh, their nuclear 
<laughs> but uh, I think Rupert in, uh, in this case is the better choice because it uh, supports better this uh, low resource languages that Bulgaria unfortunately belongs to. Uh, of course, integration of uh, a part of speech and uh, other morphological uh, prediction. Mm -hmm. And uh, the model would be good to be evaluated with other uh, highly inflected languages like the other Slavic languages to see if uh, if it will give any advantages there. And thank you for your attention. <laughs>